What's going on in this article? Okay, what did they issue? What's it called? It is, but there's more words to it. National NSPD 51. NSPD 51. I want you to think about this. National Security Presidential Directive 51. Now, the first part of this means is that basically there have been 50 previous of these, but two years ago was the most recent one at the time of this article. And in NSPD 51, what does it empower the president, at that time President Bush, to do? It gives the president authority to decide when an emergency has occurred to do whatever he um, deems necessary to ensure continuity of government cancel elections, suspend the constitutions, or launch nuclear attack on the enemy. If there was a catastrophic event in the United States, now think about this, catastrophic event, if somebody detonated a nuke in New York City or D.C. or something like this, if there was an outbreak of the swine flu where millions, tens of millions of people began to die, if there was a situation where there were catastrophic hurricanes that hit and damaged large sections of the country. So these could be man-made type things. These could be disease type things. These could be uh, from the heavens above kinds of things. Acts of God, so to speak. In this regard, under NSPD 51, the President of the United States can suspend the Constitution unilaterally or by himself. The President of the United States could conceivably cancel the elections. The President of the United States could launch a nuclear strike or a war either in, you know, hand in hand with these events or immediately after suspending the Constitution. Now think about this, NSPD 51, how many of you had heard about this? One, okay, that doesn't surprise me, James has. Tell me more about this, Lisa, what else does it say in there? What did it say specifically in reference to President Bush? Uh, Bush and Cheney quote something like that, a fake terrorist attack? There was an argument that the Bush administration, in an effort to keep power, might actually implement NSPD 51. And the thought was, let's fake a terrorist attack. Let's do any number of things in order to have this catastrophic situation so that the elections get canceled and then we would continue in the interest of the continuity of the government to continue to go forward. I mean, think about 2012, the movie that's out. Now, they say it's scientifically completely wrong, but that would be a circumstance where indeed things could go about, where that the president could suspend things, rule unilaterally, basically become a dictator. And understand, there is no check on this. National Security Presidential Directive means this is the president's commander-in-chief powers, so he or she would be using this specifically as one of their powers, and indeed Congress, courts, nobody have no check on this because their check would have been thrown away when the Constitution was. Go ahead, Nate. Um, did you see the movie? I have not seen the movie. Does anybody have seen the movie? What movie? 2012. I mean, it's not bad, but there's like the go the action was pretty cool, but the government thing, like you said, um, I'm not trying to ruin it, but there was a part where like the president, the president, the vice president, and all the House of Reps were like somehow not able to make it to this ship that was supposed to save everybody. Right. So it was like the weirdest thing, like some weird speaker was the guy taking charge of everything. Oh, yeah, it was like some weird guy. He, I, like, I don't even know what position he was in government. Like, mm -hmm. he, like, he was the guy that went to the president and talked to him and all that. And then, but he wasn't like, he wasn't the um, the treasury. He wasn't um, the, you know, he wasn't the vice president. He was just like this regular guy in the right. tuxedo. Right. Right. And, and that just made me mad because like, if the president dies, and the first wife dies, and then the vice president dies. And who's the next person that gets the... It's supposed to be president, vice president, speaker of the house, and then it begins to go into cabinet secretaries and things like this. See, when the president gives the State of the Union, you'll notice that the Supreme Court is up in the front to the right, the cabinet secretaries are all there. They always have one cabinet secretary not there. Because the State of the Union, you've got the president, you've got the vice president, and you've got the speaker. That's one, two, and three. And then the rest of the cabinet, they always leave one person out in the event that somebody attacked the State of the 
the Union because that person would be the next president of the United States if something tragic, catastrophic kind of thing happened. Well, what if someone just straight up, like... President of the Senate. What if someone just straight up, like, nuclear bombed Washington? And that's what happened in the movie. Like, Washington, D.C. got destroyed. Yeah. Like, See, the, the, the Speaker of the House is the leader of the House. The Vice President is technically the leader of the Senate, but it's really more in name only. So the State of the Union is symbolic because when the President talks you got the Speaker or the Leader of the House on one side, the Vice President or the Leader of the Senate on the other, so they need to be there, at least in theory. But the Cabinet, there's always one missing, or two sometimes, and they specifically have them missing specifically so that the government could continue because they have the next President right there. That, that's why they do that. I give you this in this directive. Go ahead. He's far away. He's far away. Washington would be like crushed, basically, if you had a nuke. Like, we would die in like 30 minutes. Trust me, Rockville is far enough away. No, no. Like, Rockville is far enough away from D.C. Yeah, but I would be dead in 30 minutes. Not really. Okay, in, in fairness, in fairness, I don't know the answer as far as how far as far, but the State of the Union, the State of the Union is virtually the only time that the President and the Vice President are together, unless, of course, they're drinking beer with, with cops and college professors. Go ahead, Bearcat. Quiet down, quiet down. Go ahead, Bearcat. Is there a time limit on this, Lisa? I don't know. Okay, while you're looking, Louise, go ahead, and then we'll come back to it. As for nukes, like, if they've nuked D.C., if you were on Sugarloaf Mountain, your eyes would melt. Okay, I appreciate that. I don't believe in the article that there is a time limit. So the idea is, is that once the president declares this, once, quiet down, folks, please. Once the president, I'll wait. Shut up. Once the president declares this, if the president rules and will go until the president gives it back. And see, the beauty of this as president, willingly, and that's the beauty of this as president, because when you think about it, you don't ever have to give it back. And see, when I taught at, or when, actually, when I was an advisor, I used to be an advisor with North Carolina Wesleyan College. There was a woman there that taught political science. And when she taught political science, on her website, she had links of all sorts of things that compared the Bush administration to terrorists. She got on conservative radio. They began attacking her. The faculty turned against her because they said she was driving down enrollment and all these different things. But one of the arguments that she said, and she taught this in her classes, she said, listen, those weren't planes that hit the towers on 9-11 or the Pentagon. She said those were cruise missiles. And she said, basically, they took holograms of planes, put them over the cruise missiles, they were fired into the buildings, and then indeed, because, and her biggest argument, and a number of, of, of arguments on the web, and again, you got to consider the source, are if you go to the Pentagon, the hit on the Pentagon was a perfect circle, and you didn't find wings, and you didn't find plane parts, and you didn't find things like this. One of the other ones, and, and I think it's something like called Loose Change. James, this would be one of your websites. Is it Loose Change or something along those lines where um, they show the, the footage of the planes going in, and it's like something was shot from underneath the yeah. plane into the building. Do you know the website? Uh, the website, no, but I've seen something like that on YouTube where basically they're saying it's, it wasn't actually a plane. It was like a missile or something. Yeah, they're saying that the plane fired something, and you can actually see an explosion in the building before the plane gets there. Now, again, number one, I don't want to say that, that the Bush administration did this. Number two, the, the footage and, and the sources, you've got to consider the sources. So maybe there's some degree of truth to it, but maybe there's some common sense to it. Her argument was the Bush administration did exactly this to be able to increase the power of the government and the presidency. So when you read something like this and a president... NSPD 51 has got this kind of authority. And it doesn't matter if it's Bush, doesn't matter if it's Clinton, doesn't matter if it's Obama, it doesn't matter if it's the next guy. This is a huge load to give them because as you said, Bearcat, you take it, you don't have to give it back, and odds are there's not really going to be a lot of people necessarily left to stop you once it does because of the confusion, because of the death, because of the carnage. Go ahead, and then I'll come up front. Um, so how does she They never get into that. Another thing. They never get into that. Again, I'm not saying that I agree with this. In fairness, she created these links. She died mysteriously within a year.